President Tinubu urges Nigeria armed forces to step up fight against insecurity, promising government's commitment to providing their needs for an operational efficiency. I've given myself the following charge to deploy the entire machinery of state power to ensure security of our people and property. West and East African leaders unite for trade and integration across both regions. We'll have a situation where somebody can leave Nigeria and go to Burundi without any visa. Plus, ex-Minister of Aviation faces charges over allegedly taking of kickbacks and government funds. Hello and welcome to the Network News. I am on large day below. Joining me from Lagos is Adiola Komiakuri and Kemi Oshi from our Ibadan studio. And remember, you can join this broadcast live on our website, www.nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen. Now, starting with national security, President Bola Tinubu has implored the Nigerian armed forces to step up its game and combating uh, all security challenges facing the country. He just asked the federal government is ready to provide their needs for an improved operational efficiency. President Bola Tinubu was at the Senior Corps 45 graduation ceremony of the Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Jaji. State House correspondent Musbad and Wahab reports. The President and Commander-in-Chief would witness as his armed forces get a reinforcement. And these are the lucky officers whose graduation President Sinubu is attending on his first visit to the Joint Service Institution. Tactical and operational level officers upskilled for 48 weeks and now certified. You have been found worthy in character and learning. Congratulations. Some also distinguished themselves, winning awards in different categories, including the only lady of the set who emerged the best overall non military student. As you return to your respective nations, services, and agencies, the comprehensive training you received here must reflect in your contributions to us addressing the profoundly presidential challenges that our nation and the world faces today. I say to you personally, congratulations. They all earn presidential respect as the best of the moment, but that has also placed additional responsibilities on them. Your graduation today is a call to greater duty for the nation. The nation you love. May you stand brave and unwavering in the discharge of your constitutional responsibilities. And may you always do honor to the sterling name of the Armed Forces Command and Staff College. President Sinubu acknowledges the challenging global continental and regional security threats demanding collective efforts but with the armed forces in front for the safety and peace of all. This new generation of threats demand that African countries work together as never before. In this regard, the multinational collaboration of Nigeria, Cameroon, the Niger Republic, and Chad to bring peace to the Chad region is an example that must be improved by all means and replicated whenever it's necessary. As Commander-in-Chief, I have given myself the following charge to deploy the entire machinery of state power to ensure security of our people and property in a just and democratic society. We as Minister of Defense and the Armed Forces, we only 
uh, can reassure His Excellency, Mr. President, that whom much is given, much is expected. And therefore, we are ready to do our best to ensure that we maintain the territorial integrity and the sanctity of our dear country, Nigeria. I am uh, very, very happy and fired up, especially with the remarks of the special guest of honor, the President Commander-in-Chief. Um, all of us are happy that he uh, attended this graduation ceremony. We will see how we are going to conquer all threats that is coming to our nation through land, sea and air. It has been a wonderful experience which will help us in our future to conduct our operations as well as to help the country in terms of defense and other methods. The 291 graduates of the Senior Course 45 cut across the Nigerian Armed Forces, non-military agencies and include international students from Asian and other African countries. From Jaji, Muspal and Wahab, NC News. And an anti-corruption act of corruption, disloyalty, disobedience to constituted authority and insubordination will be decisively dealt with and defaulters will be shown the way out. Acting Chairman of the Academic and Financial Crimes Commission said that these are the graduation of Detective Superintendent Cadence Course 9 at the EFCC Academy in Abuja. Francis Form report. These are the Cadets Detective Superintendent Course 9 of the EFCC. Their journey into the EFCC, which began 12 months ago with rigorous training in legal, operations, forensic, ICT, financial and the general studies, came to a climax today. Twelve months ago, you perhaps had doubts what was going to happen to your children. Well, God has helped us to keep your children and I'm very sure that when they live here and you see them, they will be better human beings than, than you handed over to us. If you misbehave, if you compromise your office, we send you back to your parents. And that is why we are saying it to the hearing of the parents. For the acting chairman of the commission, the cadets are coming in at a time the commission is championing the fight against unwholesome acts being perpetrated by unscrupulous persons whose aim is gaining illicit wealth at the expense of the populace. I urge you all to acquaint yourselves with the staff regulations and all other policies and manuals of the commission. The EFCC is strictly guided by the Establishment Act and the earlier mentioned documents, internalize them and let them be your daily guide. Two cadets who developed applications for the academy, Best Marksman and Woman Rifle, Best Marksman and Woman Pistol, and the overall Best Cadet were honored by the commission. Francis from NTN News. Moving to infrastructural development, President Bola Tinubu has approved the establishment of Infrastructure Support Fund, ISF, for the 36 states of the Federation as part of measures to cushion the effects of the petrol subsidy removal on the people. The approval was disclosed at the monthly meeting of the Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAC, in Abuja. The new infrastructure fund is expected to enable the states to intervene and invest in the critical areas of transportation, including farm-to-market road improvement, agriculture, encompassing livestock and ranching solutions, health with a focus on basic health care, education, especially basic education, power and water resources that will improve economic competitiveness, create jobs and deliver economic prosperity for Nigerians. The community also resolved to save a portion of the monthly distributable proceeds to minimize the impact of the increased revenues occasioned by the subsidy removal and exchange rate unification and money supply, as well as inflation and exchange rates out of the June 2023 distributable revenue of 1.9 trillion naira. Only 907 billion will be distributed among the three tiers of government, while 790 billion will be saved and the rest will be used for statutory deductions. These savings will complement the efforts of the Infrastructure Support Fund, ISF, and other existing and planned fiscal measures. 
all aimed at ensuring that the subsidy removal translates into tangible improvements in the lives and living standards of Nigerians. And now to the Food Security Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas has urged African Parliament to work towards providing legislation that will grow investments in agriculture and guarantee food security on the continent. He stood up these while addressing the third plenary session of the 18th Commonwealth Speakers and Presiding Officers Conference holding in Yaoundé, Cameroon. In a statement by his advisor on media and publicity, Musa Krishi, the speaker acknowledged that the burden of food insecurity in the world is heaviest in Africa. He however noted that parliaments on the continent could address some of the issues causing food crises, such as climate change and poor infrastructure. While the federal government is prioritizing the national social safety net programs, especially those targeted at children's welfare. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Judge Akumar Stutevis, while receiving the UNICEF country representative in his office, Kenneth Nanim reports that the SGF also played host to delegation from the Nigerian German Investment Expo. UNICEF Nigeria country's representative is here on a visit to the SGF to intimate him on the five-year work plan of UNICEF in Nigeria regarding the welfare of children and women, as well as enhanced partnership with the federal government. We are interested in looking at what are your priorities and see if we can also contribute in some areas where we can say we can bring an added value. The SGF reaffirmed that the present administration is committed to addressing issues bordering on the well-being of children and women. When we talk of social inclusion, social security, this government is going to address this with emphasis on transparency as well. In a separate remarks, the SGF explained efforts by the federal government to create an enabling environment that will attract foreign investments into the country and by extension deepen mutual trade and bilateral relations between Nigeria and other countries. The time for Nigeria to take the center stage as an economic powerhouse in Africa is now. Nigeria is highly endowed, would have the human resources who have the natural resources. And that is why His Excellency has decided to make his government a business-friendly one. The SGF played host to officials of Nigeria German Investment Expo who paid him a courtesy visit. Kenneth Nanim, NCA News. On to trans-border trade integration, speakers of the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS Parliament and the East Africa Legislative Assembly have agreed to foster integration, trade and free visa movements across both regions. The matter came up when the Speaker of East Africa Legislative Assembly visited the ECOWAS Parliament in Abuja. Charles Alpha reports. Speaker of the two assemblies discussed ways of strengthening integration between both blocks for the interests of the people to achieve a unified Africa. Sidi Tunis, Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament, and Ntaki Rutimana Joseph of the East African Legislative Assembly, after a closed door meeting, said the two parliaments have agreed to come up with resolutions to enhance visa free movement across West and East African countries, as well as share knowledge on best parliamentary practices. We are trying now to get, uh, to open the, 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 the air space for flights and to, to get the cheapest ticket as, uh, as one country when you are in. That way, the integration that we are talking about, it will happen. We will have a situation where somebody can leave Nigeria and go to Burundi without any visa, and you'll That's be allowed to stay in there. Both speakers also discuss supporting the candidate of the Speaker of the Tanzania House of Assembly, Tulia Axon, as president of the Interparliamentary Union. Joseph said Africa clinching the presidency after 100 years of the Union's existence is an opportunity that must not elude the continent. Charles Alpha, NTN News. 
To regional unity, African regional bodies must unite to find solutions to their peculiar problems. This is coming from the Speaker Equals Parliament, Sidi Mohamed Tunis, while leading his East African counterparts on a visit to the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies. John Yaku has details. The visit of the Speaker Equals Parliament, Sidi Tunis, and that of East African Legislative Assembly is to familiarize themselves exchange ideas and find ways of strengthening ties between regional legislative bodies in Africa. Needs as a training institute is therefore a rallying point for the regional parliaments to acquire such knowledge and address their challenges. The bottom line is that Africa is trying to unite. But to be able to unite the people of the sub, this sub-region, the foundation has to be these regional bodies. Because they are good for Africa, voting laws which are good for Africans and stand as one economically, politically, that's the only way that Africa will avoid to get divided. We are trying to encourage all African parliaments to set in their staff. Parliamentary staff, yeah. and even the parliamentarians, of most of these short programs, either the master program or the short courses. A memorandum of understanding between needs and the ECOWAS Parliament for the training of parliamentarians and staff was muted at the meeting. In Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News. We pause for a break right now. <laughs> Many thanks for being there. Now to a post-2023 presidential election review. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has met with the 37 coalition and returning officers for the 2023 presidential election in continuation of its post-election review meetings. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu re-emphasized that the post-election review was to assess how far and how well the 2023 general election went. Thimothy Yusuf reports. This meeting is the fourth in the series of INEX post-election review of the 2023 general election. The briefing of coalition and returning officers for the 2023 presidential election is the main task in this interface between the election management body, INEC, and these vice chancellors of universities, having played a key role in the conduct of the exercise. As field workers, we expect to hear from you the challenges encountered. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu called for a holistic review of their role in the 2023 presidential poll with a view to also evolve strategies for future improvement in the nation's elections. At this meeting, we will identify areas of strength and weaknesses as well as the necessary reforms that we need to introduce going forward. INEC is also scheduled to meet with other critical stakeholders in the coming days as part of the post-election review meetings. Timothy Yusuf, NTA News. Now to the judiciary. A former Minister of Aviation, Senator Stella Adoa, has been arraigned before the Federal High Court Abuja Division over her alleged involvement in receiving kickbacks from contractors and taking possession of government funds during her tenure as Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Labo Diarewa reports that Odoa and eight other defendants are facing a 25 count charge filed by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Defendants Stella Odoa, Gloria Odita, Unwo Sundamdi, Irene Chinyere, Global Offshore and Marine Limited, Tip Top Global Resources Limited, Crystal Television Limited, Sobora International Limited and China Civil Engineering and Construction Company. Their trial have been on since 2021, but upon entering the dock this Friday, the nine defendants pleaded not guilty to the counts. Stella Odua is being accused of using her office in 2014 to confer unlawful monetary advantage on herself when she allegedly received monies totaling 5 billion naira from contractors who are seeking government patronage. The alleged offences run contrary to the Money Laundering Prohibition Act of 2004. After taking their pleas, the court fixed the commencement of trial 
to October 17, but found that the inability of the EFCC to obey its earlier directive, wherein Justice Ian Gekwo had ordered that certain individuals who have been pressurizing the court over the Stella Udua trial should be brought before the court. Meanwhile, the court has ordered that the defendants should remain on the administrative bill earlier granted to them by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in Abuja Labadarewa. NT News. To oil bunkering now, and in continuation of the fight against illegal bunkering, the Nigerian Army 6th Division garrison has intercepted and impounded a truck transporting 80 drums of AGO at a parole in Ahoda, East local government area of River State. The Babari Sidoma Mwake reports. The truck loaded with 80 drums of AGO was impounded by the military troop, following intelligence reports. On sighting the troop, the suspected bunkers fled and abandoned the truck and its products. Commander 6 Division Garrison Nigerian Army, Brigadier General Eddie F. Young, laments the huge economic loss and sabotage caused by activities of bunkers. He promised that the military will continue to ensure that the Niger Delta region is rid of illegal oil bunkering activities. Ordinarily, you just think they are just carrying maybe goods, maybe frozen items, and you just allow them to pass. So, Beth, we just want them to understand that as they are devising new methods, we equally are going to be on their toes, following them up to apprehend them. If trucks drivers are stopped on the road to search, they should not get angry and say, we are driving trucks carrying goods, commodities, not crude products. So anything now can be used to transport illegally refined crude products. The federal government says we should not carry out illegal bunkering activities, then we should abide by it. He further assures that the product will be handed over to relevant authorities. In Port Harcourt, Dimba Barri, Siedem Omeke, NT News. Now to elicit drug deals in a bid to sanitize communities of criminal elements, a security team led by the Nigerian Navy has arrested some suspected drug dealers in a tourney following an earlier attack on the United States Embassy staff along Umuanankwa or Samala Road or Garu local government area of Nambra State. Udo Koronko Chuku has details. In recent times, the 15 communities in Aubaru local government area have been engulfed in one crisis or the other. The situation has left Atani, the headquarters of the council, open to criminal handouts. The security team arrested three suspects, a 37 year old mother of four, who is accused of selling meth and cannabis sativa with her husband, a 32 year old man who cultivates and offers home service delivery to his prospective buyers is arrested alongside his neighbor. So I just started it. I have no made much on it. And the, one I, the one I made, I just used to buy uh, my machine. I don't know what I will do again. I just said, just the manager. Very soon now, we'll go stop the business. Because I, I don't tell I said, it's more time I go old. The president general of the community, Arinze Nzeli, coordinated the operation and led the security team to the homes of the suspects. He decried the activities of the criminals and described the involvement of the security agency as a last resort for the community. Because of illicit uh, uh, drugs and other things, our youth are behaving abnormal. They are stealing, they are robbing, they are doing so many things. They are abusing people. They are even abusing the sand uh, miners in Atani. The problem is that if there is some group of people terrorizing in the community, the area that they are doing business, some, uh, some business, Deserving our customers by hitting them, collecting money. The security team assured the community that the suspects will be handed over to the NGLEA for prosecution. In our nature, Udo Okoron Kochuku, NTN News. Now let's join Adeola in Lagos to keep us up to speed from that zone. Adeola, it's over to you. Lajide and a welcome to Lagos.
The National Gallery of Art, in conjunction with Yaba College of Technology, organized an art fair featuring works of lecturers in School of Art, Design and Printing Technology of the institution to showcase new talents and artistic visual impressions. Larry Belay has the details. The fair gave a platform for proprietors of Nigerian hearts, young and old artists, curators, done in heart faculties in higher institutions to come together and celebrate each other. It kicked off with a 25-year-old student, Titi Layo, Abdul Razak, challenging our lecturer using black and white charcoal on a cheap bird paper to draw a Yoruba and Igbo woman dancing. I was so much happy for me to see my student coming here to challenge me in drawing. I see myself building a career on art. Director General National Heart Gallery and other heart stakeholders says the exhibition is a way of showcasing the power of heart in telling the Nigerian story and culture. National Gallery can confirm that art scholars not only teach but are involved in active studio practice. Various displays were showcased in the gallery, with NTA promising not to relent in being in the forefront of beaming the nation's cultural pride to the world. We continue as NTA, as a national broadcaster, to collaborate with people who are interested in projecting a positive image of our country. And that means all the stakeholders in the arts and the sculpture industry. Art stakeholders, however, express dismay at the absence of nation's national art gallery. In Lagos, Larry, Bilei, NTA News. The Lagos State Police Command has handed over two suspects arrested in connection with 10 bags of cannabis sativa to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, for further investigation and possible prosecution. The police public relations officer, while briefing the media, gave assurance of its readiness to nip any act capable of influencing crime in the bud. Michael Olaleye has the details. The multi-dimensional approach of the Lagos Police Command in fighting crime seems to be the secret behind the interception of these 10 bags of cannabis sativa with street value of 13 million naira. Although the satisfaction of the police is that two persons were arrested by the Answani division, but more importantly is the cutting off of such volume from the drug supply chain, which will have had consequential effects on crime. The police public relations officer says with the level of investigation carried out, it is important to hand over the cannabis and suspects to the NDLEA, hoping that this will stimulate greater collaboration. Extend sacks of these other drugs are off the society and um, it will get into the hands of our vulnerable youth uh, because um, the menace of drug abuse is something that we have to fight jointly so we have a very robust synergy and we're taking advantage of that the ndla obviously impressed with the work done by the police maintained that the war against drug is a shared responsibility this drug war is not one agency war it's the war for every and each and every one of us because if we fail to fight the war our children will suffice the 10 bags of cannabis sativa were intercepted on the 12th of July 2023 while being transported in a Toyota Sienna minivan around the Mushi Solo axis of Lagos. Michael Olale, NT News. And we are done from Lagos, but be reminded that you can still follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on the screen for updates. We'll take a break now. The news will continue with a large day when we return to stay. Glad to know you're still there. Moving on, the Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAC, has shared the sum of 907.054 billion Naira June 2023 Federation Account Revenue to the federal government, states and local government councils. This was contained in a communique issued at the end of the Federation Account Allocation Committee FAC meeting for July 2023. 
The meeting was chaired by the Accountant General of the Federation, Uluwato Imadain. The total distributable revenue comprised distributable statutory revenue of 301.501 billion naira, distributable value added tax VAT revenue of 273.225 billion naira, electronic money transfer levy EMTL revenue of 11.436 billion naira, and exchange difference revenue of 320.892 billion naira. The balance in the excess crude account ECA was $473,754.57. The communicative VAT gross statutory revenue of 1.15 trillion naira was received for the month of June 2023, higher than the sum of 701.787 billion naira received in the previous month by 451.134 billion naira. According to the communique signed by Bawa Mokwa, Director, Press and Public, Public Relations Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, Companies Income Tax CIT recorded tremendous increase in the month under review. Import and excise duties, value added tax, oil and gas royalties increased significantly, while petroleum profit tax and electronic money transfer levy decreased considerably. Now, Benny Adams is standing by with business news. Benny. Thank you, Olajide, and welcome to business. In an effort towards overcoming the challenges of counterfeiting, cloning, and faking on imported and locally manufactured products, Standards Organization of Nigeria has taken its sensitization campaign to Kano. Amin Omar reports that the program is to enlighten key stakeholders on a newly introduced product authentication mark. Authentication mark is just like the Naira note. It has a lot of security embedded in it and it's difficult to fake and uh, that's a very important uh, thing. So if businessmen are here to make profit, very soon their profit is going to go down if they peddle uh, substandard products. And still talking about food security, with the state of emergency declared on the agri sector and incentives being provided by farmers, experts commend the move and advise that commodity price control should be put in place and the ban on foreigners from buying agri produce directly from the farmers should be extended to other indigenous middlemen who exploit the process by purchasing agricultural produce at the farm gate, store and resell, thereby encouraging food inflation. Buy it at a premium prices, store them, and deprive those uh, fa factories that are coming to buy from local market. That also encourage inflation. And also we have foreigners that comes in from outside the country, start buying this thing directly from our local market. And indeed, now they have moved into our own farmers directly. They will go there, give lead the farmers with some uh, money or buy of the, the product before it even grows. Uh, so government needs to anyway get a data of what is actually on ground. And taking a look at the market, a trading closed positive on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange on the last trading day of the week. The NGX All Share Index increased to 65,003.39 basis points. Market capitalization also advanced to 35.394 trillion naira. 770.799 million shares exchanged hands on the floor of the exchange in 8,915 deals, valued at 14.264 billion naira. Well, that is business news. <laughs> Many thanks for being there. And our next port of call is Ibadan, where Kemi Oshin is standing by. Hello, Kemi. Take it up from here. Thank you, Olajide, and it's a warm welcome to Ibadan. Security agencies have expressed renewed hope to uphold their mandate through effective synergy in the protection of lives and property. This was the fallout of a familiarization visit and roundtable by heads of security agencies in Abeokuta, the state capital. Hakim Jimo reports. The visit by the Ogu State Commissioner of Police, CP Mustafa Abiyadun Alamutu, and the Controller, Nigeria Immigration Service, Ogu State Command, Olufumilaya Olayemisi Bosede, is to familiarize themselves with the activities of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Ogu State Command. 
the need for renewed synergy and review strategies among security agencies to meet with the current security realities and challenges in Nogu State top the agenda. Of eight, we have discovered that these hoodlums have come up with a different strategy. That is why it is equally important for us to be ahead of them. I want to join force with you with the existing, uh, you know, synergy that is already among the, the security agents in Obo State for us to forge ahead and make Obo State a safer place for indigents. The Commandant, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Ogu State Command, David Didowo Jelabi, underscored the importance of intelligence sharing among the various security agencies to nip crime and criminality in the board. If you have any information, it must be processed and sent to the necessary you know, security agencies on time. While CP Alamutu was deployed to Ogu State on 5th of July 2023, Comptroller Bosebe was posted from Ondo to Ogu State in June this year as partners in crime prevention and detection. In Abel Kuta, Akim Jimo, NTA News. The Governorship Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Abel Kuta has accepted the plea of the Council to the People's Democratic Party, Godi Uche, seeking re examination of one of the witnesses after some irregularities were discovered in his eligibility in the ongoing trial. Kemi Orusholu Sikiru has details. The People's Democratic Party, PDP in Ugu State, and its gubernatorial candidate, Ladi Adebutu, presented five more witnesses to argue their case at the ongoing election petition tribunal, challenging the outcome of the governorship election in Ugu State, won by Governor Dako Abiodun of the All Progressives Congress, APC. Councils to all the parties in the petition took turn to cross-examine the witnesses before the Amidu Kunaza-led tribunal. It was a tough argument. On the sixth witness, counsels to the parties drew more light to this. All witnesses' statement on oath must be filed along with the petition. And so we raised the objection. Uh, and a subpoenaed witness who is or function as an ad hoc staff. In fact, he was uh, a presiding officer. We wanted him to speak with respect to the polling unit where he functioned, but uh, there were objections here and there. After the day's proceedings, with optimism to get justice done, both councils expressed confidence and neutrality of the tribunal. The sittings continues. In Abelkuta, Kemi, Onusholu Sikiru, NC News. And that's it from Ibadan. It's back to you, Olajide. Many thanks, Kemi. And to intercessory prayer, the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan Abano State Chapter, has observed a special intercessory prayer session over the worrying shortfall of rainfall in Meduguri and other parts of the state for over a month. The prayer, which took place at the First Baptist Church, made a great attracted Christian faithful from different denominations within the Borno State's capital. Mirka Danmalam reports. It is about a month now that the city of Meduguri is experiencing cessation of rainfall after the commencement of the rainy season, causing worries to the populace. Right from time, believers usually intercede with God in prayer when difficulties and calamities befall the land. Hence the need for Khan, Borno State Chapter, to organize a special prayer service to plead for the mercies of God on mankind for abundant rainfall and bountiful harvest. In his message, the State Khan Chairman, Reverend John Bakeni, took his readings from the book of James chapter Chapter 5 verse 16, which says, The fervent prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective, calling on the congregation to refrain from sin so that the prayers will be answered. So we have come together this morning as a Christian family to join our prayers with that of our Muslim brothers and sisters throughout the state and other traditionalists too, so that God will intervene in our situation. The Christian community have always been very proactive in times of this kind of trials. The Christian faithful as a family should come and pray for God to have mercy on his people. We urge Christians to continue praying because this is not the end of the prayer and we need the rain.
the prayer session was offered in different local and national languages where the clergy enjoined Christian faithfuls to intensify prayers in their various denominations for peace and abundant rainfall in the state and beyond. We will never be weak because of lack of rain. In the name of Jesus. In Medugri, Milka Damala, NTA News. And up next.